Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Candace. This is FlossTube 37. Uh, it is January 27th and I'm back after another week. Yay. So um, it's actually been, what, nine days because I recorded on Monday last week, but husband just took the kids to swim. Puppy is crated. Dog is sleeping. We should be good. Unless a cat walks by and nudges things. So, what do we got? We got a couple finishes. We got some whips. This is a channel, if this is your first time here, welcome. Thanks for joining me. Um, this is a channel about all things stitching. So we have cross stitch. We have a little bit of quilting, a little bit of knitting. Uh, no quilting this week, even though my shirt says quilting. Um, no quilting this week. I managed to get quite a bit of cleaning done down here. So hopefully some quilting can start back up. Um, I've got a lot of projects I want to get done. You know, my kids quilts need to get done. So, um, I did get some cleaning going on down here. So, um, let's just jump right in and we'll start with the finishes. So I finished a couple of things. Let's start with the knitting finish. This I had actually started back in 2019. It was um, for an advent calendar and the advent calendar I'd gotten from Goosey Fibers and you can see right here in my little jar um, I have my husband got me this for Christmas so I have a whole bunch of the yarns from that and my last project that I showed last week the dust of snow so, um, all these pretty balls of yarn. So this way, the cats can't play with it. And I can see them so I can say, oh, I think I want to do, you know, a cowl out of blues. And then I can go in and grab all the blues out of here. Um, hopefully that will get me using more of my leftovers. So this was a Goosey Fibers Advent Kit. And the cool thing was, is it was Harry Potter inspired. And I like Harry Potter. I'm not like a super fan or anything. I enjoy it. But this was neat because all the colors were named after spells. So if you go to my Ravelry, um, I'm Candace K31. And you can see all of the names in order that I put them. So these are not in the order that I opened them last year. I actually opened them all and then started knitting this. So the, um, the contrast color right here is Madeline Tosh. It's a Tosh sock. So it's a little bit, you can kind of see it. It's a little bit, um, fluffier and thicker than the Goosey Fibers. It lends to a really cool texture. So let me show you. I started at this end with these awesomely bright colors. So I put these in my own color order. That's why I listed them on uh, my Ravelry because there was no way I was gonna remember which ones I put where. So they're listed with the number and then, and I kind of overblocked this a little bit. Um, it, these should not be stretched out like that. They should be in a little bit. So I might reblock it, but We'll see. So we started there. It's long because it's, you know, a bunch of colors. 25, I think. And down to the end. So I think when you guys saw it last time, I was somewhere in here. In these, like browns, greens, kind of. And then I went into the more greens and blues. So I love it. It's super long. But this is exactly something that I would wear to work. Um, sweater, dress pants, throw this on. Um, I actually wore my dust of snow that I showed last week. I wore that uh, the day after I recorded. So that might happen with this one too. I might wear that tomorrow. So that's done. Oh, the pattern is Adventuresome Wrap by Amba O'Brien. Uh, you can find that on Ravelry. Um, I'm not sure if she has it on any other sites. 
Um, but she is on Instagram, so you can always check her out there for that pattern. Um, I love it. It was a great pattern. I will probably do it again. Because every single, like with Dust of Snow, um, each one was different, and then it started repeating. This one, every single band is exactly the same. So it ended up being pretty intuitive um, once I picked it back up and worked on it consistently. So the next finish, this was a mania start. This is from the trilogy. It's called Love Tree. And I did not have the buttons for this, so I added my own. But that's done. It's on 28 count um, factory tea dyed Monaco with DMC. Now, I didn't have any, it shows purple buttons in this. And I didn't have any purple ones. So I just used pink and red. And then I think what I'm going to do is the fabric that I put behind it. Because I think I'm going to make it kind of like a little ornament and have it hang. You know, like a little square ornament. And have it hang like all these little ones that I did for Mania. You know, and have it hang back here. So I think I'm going to use purple fabric behind it to kind of tie the purples in. But I don't have any. I have like one fabric that has... It's more of a lavender, and that wouldn't look good with this. How Purple's my favorite color. How do I not have purple fabric? I don't know. Anyway, the buttons are um, Lori Holt buttons. When you buy the button, like her buttons, there's, a, I don't know, like a hundred of them or something, all different colors. So I just grabbed out a couple reds and a couple pinks, and, um... One is more of a coral, and one's pink, and then there's two that are more of a pinky red, and one that's more of a true red. So, they're not all exactly the same, but that one's done. I actually finished this for an event in Semi-Scene Stitchers, and they did like a finishing weekend. So, not fully finishing as far as framing and all that stuff, but just finishing projects. So I would, since it was also 24 hours of cross stitch this weekend, I had said I wanted to work on my year of celebrations from Hands On Design. So I'll just get that one out now since we're talking about it. Um, so I had asked if each month could be its own finish and they're like, oh yeah, absolutely. Because it was more than 200 stitches left on them. So... I used these for 24 hours of cross stitch, and I also used it for semi scene Stitchers finishing weekend. So I actually finished with this six things, because I finished five months. So, <laughs> yay! Um, so I finished January, and I just used DMC with these. These are on... 32 count lamb's wool jobelin. And here's February. Now, January only took me two hours to finish. And I thought, cool, I can work two hours on each of these and I can get them all finished in 24 hours. Look at that heart. Uh, yeah, this one took me like four hours to finish. And then March... January was the fastest one to finish, but. And here's April. That cloud was something else. And here's May. And yes, the basket does really end like that. So <laughs> I didn't forget those stitches. It really ends like that. So I got those five months done which means I just have seven more to go. So I figure the next 24 hours of cross stitch, unless that gets called for whip go, I'm fairly certain it's on my whip go board. No, it's not. Perfect. So the next 24 hours of cross stitch, I will pull this out again 
and I will start working um, June. And we'll see how far I can get. So I think I'm going to wait and finish these all at the same time. And then I have like just a little wooden board that has the metal clip on it. And I think I'm going to put them on there. So here is what the pattern looks like if anyone's interested. Hands on design. And for Canadian friends, she has um, replacements for July and November. So that way, you don't have to be stitching on our Independence Day. All right. So, I... So I say so all the time and I'm very sorry. I did set this over here so I don't lose it. So I so so I did so by row. <laughs> we'll just we'll make it fit. Um this is from Fat Quarter Shop, designed by Lori Holt for It's So Emma. This is a stitch along going on right now with Fat Quarter Shop. Now, I'm behind. They are in the sewing machine row this week, I believe. And I think I'm going to switch up the colors of my sewing machines. For some reason, I'm just not, like, feeling the green. So I might just kind of switch them all around because I really like the aqua. And I also, see how that one's yellow, that end one? Mine's not. I changed it. I figure I have all this floss. I can do what I want, right? So this is where I'm at. Um, this last one right here, I changed to pink instead of yellow. I liked the thought of having the aqua and pink next to each other. And it's actually Island Breeze and Peony, I think. Yeah, from Weeks Dye Works. So there's the flosses for it. I got the floss pack for this one. Um, and of course it came with enough floss if you're doing it on 25 count, two over two. Well, I'm doing it on 28 count, two over two. So I'll probably have some left over, but, and today I did this two pair of scissors. The other day I did those two pairs of scissors. Cause I think I only had three done the last time I showed you. And then I did, I got started on the little, um, tomato pin cushions. So I'm going to save, this has like a running stitch to separate each row. I'm going to wait until the end because if I can find some really small rickrack, I think I'm going to sew that in between instead because this is going to hang down here. Um, I just, it's, this is just white Lugana. So I just like it. I think it's super cute. And it will look fantastic down here, so... Hopefully I'll get some more work done on that this week. We had some snow days. And I said last week that this was my um, snow day project. You would think that I would have had this pulled up, but I forgot. So, of course, I have to put in the password because it's uh, from Creative Poppy. So, they have passwords on their PDFs. So, this is Barbara Anna's Let It Snow. And this is my snow day project. And, you know, it's crazy because um, I've been really conscious of sharing my cross stitch more on Instagram and my posts with this project have gotten more likes than any other post I've ever posted. It's insane. I don't know if it's the, if it's tagging Barbara Anna or what, but I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. So I got a lot done. Now, if, if, the program that I have on my phone this time 
if I can insert a picture, I will of where I was before, you know, when you guys saw it last week. Because I know some people might miss a week or um, I really like to see how much progress, like in person, like not in person, visually. I like to see, oh, that's where they were. This is where they are. Instead of being like, okay, so last time I had this much, now I have this much. Um, hopefully it works. If it doesn't, <laughs> if it doesn't, I'll show you where I was at anyway. This will be the test week. So there it is. There's the whole thing right now. And it doesn't, it won't get any bigger than this. Like the scissors are done. And then this snowflake down here, that's the bottom. And then these ones are the top. So if you look, those snowflakes up there, those are in white, blanc. This snowman and that bottom snowflake are in B5200. I felt like, and these ones right here, those are in blanc. So I don't know. I wanted to see it on video and see if you could see the snowman better than you could see the snowflake. And I think you can. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to rip out, and it's not a lot, but that snowflake right there. And then these, and there's a little bit of snow on the trees. I may leave that and on the house, uh, I don't know. Then again, I might rip it out. <laughs> we'll see. Um, so before I had the scissors done to about here. So I added all of that. I had started on this house. These were all done. And then everything down here is new, down here at the bottom. So I love this. I love it. And I cannot wait to get this one done and start on um, the one that was in Just Cross Stitch Magazine, February 2021. So, and I have the windows done and then that pot that's going to have flowers in it. <sighs> Not snowing today. The sun is shining. I'm not sure when the last day was that we saw the sun, um, but it's shining. So I still have, I mean, I still have a fair amount to go, but I kind of wish my fabric had been just a wee bit darker to make the white stand out better. But it's all right. Hopefully, however I finish it, the white will stand out. That's my hope. What else did I work on? The Elf of My Bet, the B was called on the 15th, and I'm using, uh, I picked from Stash, a combination of DMC, Classic Color Works, Weeks Dye Works, I don't think I have any color and cotton in there, but I'm having a really hard time with the green because it's a fairly bright green and then a little bit darker green. So I have ordered quite a few greens lately to try and figure it out. So this is from Court E. Batacor and it's the Christmas sampler. So for this challenge, when they call the letter, you have to work on that letter. What I did, I finished up this because before I just had that, I finished this bow, the heart inside, and my B. This is on 32 count lambs will jubble in. So I got this, it's Envy, and I think I might use that. And I have some other colors that came. I just need to figure out what I'm gonna do um, before I get to those parts in the chart. There's a lot of it, the greenery right around here. So, you know. 
I'll figure it out as I get there. C will be called Friday. And then I can work on that one. And I did not realize that if you have more than one alphabet, they say that, I just learned this, if you have more than one alphabet, then they say you need to work on um, all of those letters of each alphabet. And I realized I have another alphabet. Right there. So, oh my gosh, I have two. There's one over here too. So I have alphabets on both sides. So I'm gonna need to work my way down, probably both sides, so I can get in there and work on those also. Phew, I got some work to do this week. But I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Now, Whipgo, my two Whipgo pieces for this month, I have been working on not as much as I've wanted to, but that's what happens when you work a 40 hour week and you're not used to it. Um, my husband is back to work, so I am back to working part time. Kids start hybrid on Monday, so they will be at home on Monday and Friday. And they will be at school Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Totally fine with it. They, um, has been sending me messages. He knows I'm doing my video. <sighs> the kids are really, really, really excited to go back to school. Ridiculously excited to go back to school. They want to go every single day. And I was like, guys, <laughs> you can't right now. We're lucky they're letting you go back at all. So this was the first one that was called for Whipgo. This is Mini Autumn Cat Magic. And this is Heaven and Earth Designs. And it was charted by Melissa Dawn. He's a cute kitty. I had an orange cat when I bought this. Her name was Vinny. Yes, she had a boy's name. Yes, she was a girl. Uh... Humane Society thought she was a boy. We named her, took her to the vet. She's a girl. That's that story. Uh, she has since passed away since I bought this chart, but we did acquire two more kittens after she passed away. And we have another orange cat. So um, let's hope I get this done sometime soon. <laughs> if it works, you'll see what it looked like before. If not, I can show you where I was at. I've actually gotten quite a bit of this done. Um, my goal for this year is to do 10,000 stitches. I had 5,010 stitches for 2020. So I want to hit 15,010 stitches for my goal. I got a lot of this done right here. And then the leaves are almost done. I have gotten a few more scroll frames. This will probably end up in one. And then I'm probably going to color complete. Because there is a lot of, you know, in here. I mean, this, I think it would be fairly easy to color complete going from the borders in. And then doing a cat last. So... That's my goal. This one's on 25 count easy grid. Still love it. Still love it. The other one that was called, this is from Glendon Place. And this is Woodland Wonder. I'm doing this on the called for 32 count earthen Lugana by Picture This Plus. The only thing I've changed, aside from my mistake, is the snowflakes I'm doing in a toile. Yeah. There's a tiny little bit 
I think. I think I've worked on this since I showed it last. If not, I'm sorry. It looks exactly the same as it did last time. It may look exactly the same as it did last time. So I definitely want to put some work into it tonight. I would love to get this tree done before the end of the month. After doing this one, this one will probably be easier because of the way the colors are. However, I'll make sure I look at the colors correctly this time instead of having another jacked up tree. Because we don't want that. This one is down for a finish this year. I want to have it done by my birthday, and my birthday is in November. Um, I have all the beads, all the Krynik. I have everything I need for it. I just... Just need to work on it. That's all. Now, for my 100 days of Hade. That is in the group Stitch Talk Hade Challenges. It's a Heaven and Earth Designs subgroup. And so the only full coverage you can show is Heaven and Earth Designs. I am doing mini citrine. And I figure since I have this up, I'll just do it from here. This is mini citrine. Uh, my birthday is in November, so my birthstone is citrine slash topaz. You know. So this is uh, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. It is artwork by Rachel Anderson. And I have been doing at least 50 stitches a day. Oh, my scissors are still on there. So I've been working in this area right here. All of this is like 819, a little bit of that pink in there. I can't remember. It was like 918. Maybe. I don't know. But a lot of this I've been working on. So I think what I'm going to do since I am, I've rolled it down to the bottom. I think I might start color completing on this one. We'll see. Um, this is on 25 count Lugana that I gridded myself. Don't ever grid with DMC. It was a rookie mistake. I know. I know better now. I either get easy grid or I'll get sulky sliver. Uh, I'm working with it. It's okay. So that's it for those whips. I have one knitting whip. You guys will remember if you've been here for a while, I showed this, uh, quite some time ago. This is, let me pull up the finished picture because that'll make it a little bit easier. So, hopefully, what in the world? It's saying I need a subscription. I don't know. You're going to have to just look through the gray. So, that's the sweat. That's the sweater. Ignore the, um, here, I'll move the line. There we go. It is from Hohi Locatelli. It's called Basic Raglan. You can get it on, well, I got it on Madeline Tosh's website. Uh, but you can also get it on Ravelry. So if you remember this sweater, you'll remember that. I was super excited. I was making good progress and then I held it up and I went <gasps> from the armpits down. You could see pooling starting and I was alternating skeins. So I was, you know, I would knit a row with one skein and then switch to a different skein, knit a row. Um, it's really easy to do, but even just doing the two skeins was causing pooling. So I have three attached. I have three skeins that I am going back and forth with, and it looks amazing. I'm so excited about it. This yarn is Madeline Tosh DK. It's their Tosh DK base. It will have long sleeves. Uh, it is Denarius. That's the colorway. Mother of Dragons. So I am right about my waist. I'm doing waist shaping right now, but I love that no matter how I look at it, there's no pooling. Phew. I just, and it's funny that that, 
right there. I mean, it won't be no, it's on my back. This is the front. But the last time I showed it to you after I ripped all that out, this is where I was. So just this week, two days worth of knitting, and I've gotten that far. <sighs> I'm so excited. Um, I do have one skein that is darker. Look how dark that is compared to this I used initially up here and then faded out. I'm going to use it for the bottom ribbing and then for the sleeve cuffs. If I'm running super low, then I'll start this further up on the sleeves and just work it in. So it's more like fade into dark. I should have plenty of yarn though. I'm short. I don't need to add extra length to anything. So I'm so excited. I want to wear it now. It just looks so good and I'm just, I'm so stoked. Okay. So that's it for whips. Now today, Jessie Marie, congratulations to her. She had her little girl. Uh, she called the numbers for February for Whipco. So the numbers were four and 20. I thought it was a hoot. Um, if you're my age, you'll get it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm a responsible adult now. Uh, so number four, I have linen and threads. I have this one down for a finish. Now finish it this month. Or, well, in February, I hope so, because I really want to get it done. Um, you guys saw it last week, but I'm just going to give you a quick glimpse. I can find the top. There you go. That's the linen and threads. So I have the rest of October and then November and December to do. So I'm going to finish October, do December, because it's up top with October, and then do November, which is at the bottom. Um, I really want to get it done. So I think I'm really going to focus on this one a lot in February. The other one that was called number 20 for me is actually a new start. And it was funny because I had had every intention of starting this. It might help if I was in the right folder in Dropbox. I had every intention of starting this like in 2020 and I didn't. So this is Celebrate Christmas from Madame Chantilly. And my goal for this one is to do the top tier. So, or the top tray of the tiered tray. So this right in here. So I'm gonna do a top center start and I'm gonna start right here. Now, I pulled the DMC, what I had. I've been reorganizing and trying to fully kit some of my um, full coverage pieces so that I'm not like, oh, where did I get this thread from? Oh, does it need to go? I'm not going to try and keep notes of, oh, I took this one out of Magic Study and I took this one out of, it's just too confusing. I would rather have my full coverage pieces fully kitted. Now, Michaels still has their floss at 62 cents. I got a coupon in my email for 30% off. So Saturday, I am going to Michael's and holy macaroni, Surged Edge. I am going to Michael's and I am going to get some DMC because I have a list of what I need for each of my coverage pieces. So that's what we're doing. So the fabric I'm gonna use is a 32 count vintage Stormy Night so pretty, right? So obviously, tear tray, it'll go this way. Um, I'm very excited. But I think I'm going to use over-dyed flosses in my stash for the red and the green. There are two greens and one red. The rest is just going to be DMC. And it's so funny because that Santa has maybe 10 stitches for his face and maybe four or five stitches for a hand in 950. I go, I can find a different skin color for him then. I checked the chart. It's not anywhere else. 
So goal is top tier. So I don't even have to worry about that yet anyway. <clears throat> so that'll get started. I, like I said, that's just to get the top tray done for this year. If I get more than that done, great. But that's my goal for this one. That over there. That is it for whips. I just have a tiny little bit of um, stash enhancement. And I'm going to show this one real quick because it's the only two quilting things. I love this pattern. This is from Thimble Blossoms, which is, um, if you are a fabric person, Bonnie and Camille fabric is amazing. And this pattern is by Camille Ross Kelly. So you can find Thimble Blossoms. She has her own website and she also has an Etsy shop. So these are swoon blocks. It's called Swoon 16, and my plan is to use stash for this. Uh, it's fat quarter friendly. It'll be a 74 by 74. I can make it bigger. I mean, they're 16 inch blocks. I could easily add a row to each, and it will more than fit our bed. Um, it'll just depend on how much fabric I have left. I won't buy the backing or anything like that until it's done, until the quilt top is done. Um, I just love it. I think it's just so pretty and could look so different in so many different colors. Now, I also got from Fat Quarter Shop the Cupid Box. If you got this and you haven't received it yet and you don't want to see it, just fast forward. But this came, I'm trying to think of what day it came. It was shipped on January 16th, so, and it was ship priority, so I probably got it the day I recorded or the day after, but, I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. So this is the quilt right here, and it was funny because I thought, eh, I'll probably use the fabric for something else, but then I realized, no, you know, I think I do want to do it, but what I'm going to do is that bow right there, I'm going to flip it over so that both bows are upright. I don't really like the upside down one. So the only thing, it gave seven fat quarters and the panel. Um, and then I just had to get the background and the binding fabric and the backing. Which I did. So we got this. I'm not going to pull it out, but it's a tape measure. It's so cute. These, can I open this without being too loud? Where is the, ooh, this is folded over a long way. These are clips. So there's a bunch of red ones and a bunch of white ones. They're clips. I considered getting some baking twine and putting them on that and hanging stuff from them. They're so cute. So these are um, no slip grip hearts. You put these on the underside of your um, quilting rulers and it helps keep them in place. I have most of mine are Omni Grip and they're older. They, they do slide at times. I would love to replace all of mine with Creative Grids. Creative Grids rulers do not move. So in the meantime, I can use these on them. And then we got, if I can get it open, I should have opened it before. It's easier to see outside of the package, but this is from Moda. It's a little, you could use it as a keychain, you could use it as a bag pull. Um, it's a tape measure heart. It's so pretty. And then here is the fabric with the panel. So this panel has it, this is the one in the middle of the quilt and then it's got these extras like you could make like little pillows and I think I have my contacts in today. Um, 
I'm not sure, but I think those two middle ones might be quilt labels. I don't know. I'd have to, I'd have to look. I'd have to pull this all open and look. So I was really excited that I got this. At first I was kind of me about the quilt, but it would be really cute to hang on the wall for February, you know? Um, I don't know. I thought it was cute. So I did get some fabric, just 28 count white Lugana. And I want to say I got a 28 and a 38. 28 and a 32 white Lugana so that I could do some dyeing. Now the serendipity stitch along with Fat Quarter Shop will be happening in March, I believe. So I bought some navy blue Brit dye to dye my fabric for that. And then I got some pearl gray because gray fabric can really go with a lot of stuff. Um, try my hand at dyeing some gray. I got some Steel City Stitchers Jody fabric that like um, Michelle Bendy Stitchy says. I think it was Michelle. Maybe it was Creativity by Gidge. One of them said she was an alchemist. No, it was Michelle. It was Bendy Stitchy. Um, so this is Dusk 28 Count Lugana. And I got a fat eighth. I know it doesn't really matter which side is which, but how pretty is that? Do front and back. I'm very excited. I don't know what I'm gonna put on it, but I'm excited. I finally scored me some Jody fabric. <laughs> I love it. She just, she really has an eye. So then I got my three owl threads nest egg and you can, if you want to look into that, three owl threads has a Facebook group. So you can look into that. I don't know if it's still open or not, but I get the 10 classic color works. So we got blue corn. I love that color. Glazed carrots, frozen margarita, green onion. Now, I don't know about you. My green onions don't look like this. It's more of a silvery with a hint of green, maybe. German chocolate. I have this one already, so I do not mind that I have another one. Garden Trellis. That is a really pretty silver color. This one is amazing. It's Granny Annie. Look at that blue. It's like so many shades of blue. Here, let me hide my face. It's not going to do it. It's not going to do it. Great pie. It's purple. This grasshopper might end up in my Christmas sampler. And then finally, creamy peach, which I have. That could always be Santa's skin, being from the North Pole. All right, these are the greens that I got from Fat Quarter Shop. No, maybe I got them from 123 Stitch. No. I've ordered a lot of greens lately trying to figure out which would look best. So this is emerald, and I really like this for the lighter. This is Weeks Dye Works Emerald. I really like that for the lighter green. This one I think has a little bit too much blue in it. It's verdigris. Verde, ver, mm, no, whatever. Another grasshopper. If only I had known, right? Um, this is Gentle Art Bayberry. I think that one's too prim. This one might work, though. This is Gentle Art's um, Mistletoe. This one may work for the lighter green. Let's 
I'm gonna leave those set to the side. And spinach, I think, is just a little bit too, um, I hate always using the word prim, but it's a little too, like, dusty green. It's not bright like I was looking for. All right, last thing, very last thing, is the December 2020 Color and Cotton Three Skeins, and they're gorgeous. They're gorgeous. And I get that it's December, but I swear this should be April. Look at those colors. They're so pretty. So we have Nightshade. Matches my nails. Everest. And Petal. They're beautiful. These colors are so pretty. I feel like I need something with an Easter bunny. And some eggs. Throw a, a creamy yellow in there. So, that's it for stash acquisition. As far as plants go, I'm going to work on my two whip goes for the last few days of January. And... Uh, I really want to, um, obviously the hundred days on mini citrine, but I really, Janet Jabber is killing it on her very first heaven and earth design full coverage piece. We're doing magic study. She is killing it, but she's also doing a hundred days on that. Not the exact same thing that I am, but she's just working on it each day for a hundred days. Mine is minimum 50 stitches. She's killing it. I've worked on it once or twice. So I would really love to um, get some work done on that. And then, since I have more scroll rods now, I want to get some of my full coverage pieces in them so that they're easier just to grab and work on. I don't have to worry about pulling them out, finding a Q-snap, getting it situated, stitching, taking it out, folding it back up. Um, I am going to also make basically like scroll rod pillowcases for them to store them in so they don't get dusty. I don't have as many of the spreader bars as I do scroll rods. So some of them will come off. I will roll it all the way up and then I can slip them in. I figure I'll just make a pillowcase that's, you know, this wide and then that has a little flap that covers. Don't need to be anything fancy. Just need to keep the dust off. Now the last thing I wanted to do, so if you guys don't want to see this part, you are more than welcome to move on to your next floss tube video. Uh, there are some great ones out there. I just keep typing in randomly if I get caught up on people or I want something new. I'll just randomly type in floss tube and then look for someone I haven't watched before. I mean, hopefully, you know, we can all watch everyone, but we don't all have every single hour of the day to watch floss tube. So I'm just gonna go over, uh, I had a question about my um, my cross stitch planner, how I keep track of stuff. So I just wanted to go through real quick what I do. Um, this is just a one inch binder. I do the cross stitch calendar from Jen Lee of Quirks and Stitches. You can find that on Etsy. And then she's the one, her and her mother came up with the 24 hours of cross stitch events. So this is what I do. First thing, I have the 24 hours of cross stitch yearly habit tracker. This one is really, you just put an X for each day that you stitch. So it's got all the months at a glance you can look and say, and then you can put in here how many days you stitched. That's all that is. That's it. So I have that right in the front. I can just open the cover, mark my X, and I'm good to go. January, I actually bought the expansion pack for the calendar. So this is the one-page spread, and I'll put kind of like an idea of what I'm going to do for the month. And then the next part, and I made sure that I hole-punched it so that I could see the two-page calendar all in one. So then what I do is each day when I work on something, I write it down. Work on something, write it down for each day. 
that way I can go back and especially when I'm doing my video, I can look and say, okay, I just need to take these projects downstairs. This is what I've done since my last video. And it also, I write down for my hundred days, I write down how many stitches I did that day, which is kind of silly because I'll get to the next part in a second. I have a project tracker. Um, I have a section for plans. So this is just the stuff I want to focus on for the month. And I can go back and look into that. Um, weekly planning. These have the days of the week. So obviously I didn't start this in December. I started it in January. So I'll show you what So this is basically what I do is just write down um, what I want to do for that day. And I try and do this the night before um, or even a couple days before. So I kind of have an idea of what I'm going to do. Do I always follow it? No. It's okay. These are my January to-dos, things I need to get done in January that are um, cross-stitching related. Then I have a notes section just notes so it's you know things I wanted to talk about or for this one I have each of my groups so I have my stitch talk Hade group and then I have I'm doing 100 days with mini citrine the national parks by state I'm using mini dark goddess and the book challenge I'm using magic study these are all those two events are yearly events they're not monthly um full coverage fanatics the 21 and 21 event is a year long event and I'm using magic study. So that's just, um, kind of what I write down and these, I will, the yearly ones I'll transfer over to February. So I don't forget and I can easily find it. I only have January in this book. All the other months are in a different binder. As the month changes, I will swap it out. I might leave January in there for a few days when I put February in and then um, once I'm for sure done with the January calendars, I'll take it out and put it in the other binder. So there's a reflection section. I have a whip go section that has my whip go board. So you can see my, oops. <laughs> there's my whip go board. Now I, I got to mark four and 20 still. I haven't marked those yet. Um, I have one for semi sane stitchers, but I haven't had anything to put in it yet. Then I have, like, the marathon for 24 hours of cross-stitch planning. I already knew what I was going to do, so I didn't waste a sheet on it. And then the acrostics. I didn't really do the acrostics last year, but they came with it, so I put them in here. Um, these are project trackers. So, it's a yearly habit tracker. I'm tracking, I put these in alphabetical order, birds and blooms. And I write down how many stitches I did on what day. So I've only worked on that twice. It is max color. Um, but I'll show you magic study I've done two days. Um, here's mini autumn cat magic. This is my focus for January. So you can see I've worked on it. I had a little gap there. But I have worked on it quite a bit. And then that's nice because I can just add up my stitches. Pattern Keeper makes it easy to track stitches. I don't count stitches otherwise. And then here's Mini Citrine for the 100 days. So you can see I've done more than 50 stitches. I haven't done today yet. I was working on Sew by Row today. Um, then there's a section for whips. Oh, and the Project Habit Trackers. Only full coverage, except for Christmas Sampler, because that one I'm going to be working on for an entire year, as they call the letters. But in general, I won't use those for, um, like, the Celebrate Christmas. You know, I wouldn't use it for that. <clears throat> okay, so here are my whips. So I write down all my whips, and then I can write down the day they're finished. Then we have the new starts section. So there's been, and my writing is terrible, but I can read it. And then we have the finishes section. And I haven't written, oh no, I did. 
So I've had three finishes so far this year. I'd say that's not too shabby. But that is my cross stitch planner. This is cheap. I got it at I got it off of Amazon because they were cheaper on Amazon. I got a two pack. Um, they were so much cheaper on Amazon than like at Meyer or Walmart. I don't know why these are so expensive. It's a one inch binder. Anyway, anyway, that is all I have for this week. The more I look at these two colors, the more I think these are going to be the ones that are in Christmas Sampler. They've just been sitting here in front of me, staring at me. So, General Arts, Quest Color Works. I think these are the ones. I think these are going to look really good. It's a win. All right, look at that. We kept it under an hour. Whee! Uh, I hope you guys have a great week. I hope I did not talk too fast. I'm extra thirsty now. <laughs> but I didn't think I was going to have that much to talk about. And look at, there we are at an hour. So I really appreciate you guys stopping by and listening to me chat about all things stitching. Uh, I don't know. I just, I really enjoy doing this and I really enjoy um, making friends through floss tubes and then through the Facebook groups and stitching. I don't have any in-person stitching buddies. Uh, my mom used to stitch and she had considered doing it again, but she lives in Georgia. So we knit and send each other, you know, pieces we've knit for each other, but I don't really have anyone in person for stitching. So you guys are it. You guys are, you guys are my buddies. Um, anyway, have a great week. I will see you next time, next Wednesday. Uh, it might be a little bit later on Wednesday because Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday I will be working normal day shift. So we'll see. All right, guys. Have a great one. Bye.